I hope that you missed me, how I missed you. It's a little sunny here in my office. Let me adjust some colors and see what's going on. Well, as many of you know me, my name is Alex and I'm founder and instructor in this patch training center. And I can tell you this, that I, oh, I usually do not go live from my phone because my channel is very informative and I like to prepare, I choose the topics, I invite uh, also the guests. But lately I've been receiving lots and lots of phone calls. So I was actually thinking that we need to verify some information since uh, my new class is coming up next Saturday and people signing up. And usually they do call me ahead to ask questions to make sure that this training is a right training for them. Let's back up a little bit. You have to understand that my trainings are not pre-recorded. So we do the live trainings. The classes are going to be intense. They are long classes. Actually, each class is four hours long and we do them on weekends, on Saturdays. I don't do classes on Sunday because usually on Sundays we do our safety, IFTA, how to open company webinar and other private um, consultation and private trainings. Well, we just finished our April class and I just want to give a little feedback what I have been seeing. Uh, most people who sign up for my classes are um, choosing me after they already went to some classes. So, um, and that's what bothers me because I am not against the competition. I want everybody who is teaching this patch to give 100% to their students because honestly, it's not fair. If you already went to this patch training and if a really person, instructor, claims that they know trucking, that they know how to dispatch, then it's no need for you to go and search for another class. And that's why feedback from my students, it's very important. And we try to change trucking for the better. And the only way we can change trucking for the better, again, guys, we're not a magician. We're not controlling the market. We're not becoming a wizard, right? If market is down, the dispatcher has to do his best or her best to make sure that you still connect in the loads, to make sure that you're still negotiating. But we're not the magicians. We cannot just give you that magical load, right? Especially if you are with a brand new MC, if you are a smaller company, if you only have one or two trucks. But foundations of logistics is a must. Hi, Mr. Lincoln. How are you? I know that you went on vacation in Wisconsin to visit your family. Cute family, cute pictures. Hope you enjoy the Wisconsin. Uh, I saw you guys were eating a lot, right? And partying a little bit with a pool. So say hi to the family. I just flew back from San Diego yesterday and it was my first time in San Diego and it was a beautiful city. I went there for the little spiritual um, retreat and probably you can see my eyes are glowing. I'm so peaceful. I'm so thankful to meet so many incredible people from different, different backgrounds, different countries, different nationalities. And I can tell you this, everything which you are doing in your life comes from inner you. You have to make sure you set up your goals. And the same thing comes, can I be a dispatcher? If you put your mind into this, if you're going to invest in knowledge, if you're really going to work on the skills, if you're going to really understand the principles of market, know the details about the equipment, of course, you can become dispatcher. You can become safety manager. You can become anything, right? So that's why um, for me, with my background of being a teacher, the foundation is very important. And when we talk about strong foundation, we go to simple things as knowing and understanding USA first. Let's go back to understanding even the routes, the geography, the seasons, the holidays, right? Seeing the time zones, 
understanding that USA is a big country, especially people who are dispatching outside of the USA. This is a must. You cannot be confusing with time uh, zones. You cannot uh, not understand the seasons, right? When do we have winter? Which states are affected? What challenges are there for the drivers? If you want to be a dispatcher, start with learning about the USA, okay? Secondary, you need to understand USA trucking market. So when we talk about the market, we are concentrating on the key points, right? And key points, key cities. This is actually the cities in each state. We have a different uh, manufacturing. We have different industries which maybe take over in that state. Let's say, for example, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has an agriculture. Pennsylvania also has a Pittsburgh. It's a kind of capital of the steel, right? But also we have the tools, really expensive tools. So if you do not uh, put operational cost, how much you pay for the tolls, the traffic, and you decide, well, it's okay, my truck can just go to Pennsylvania, it just can go to New York City. No, it cannot, because first, you're dealing with the tolls, and the costs are expensive. Secondary, you are delaying because you deal with the traffic, and especially when market is not paying, this is a suicidal mission. You cannot send your truck to its cost if they are paying $1.80, $1.90, maybe $2 per mile because you will need to add money. Unless what? Unless you're owner operator and your truck is paid off and you've been in business, your trailer is paid off, you're still driving by yourself, you're dispatching by yourself, maybe, yeah, you're still making money, but even then you're making less then go and work as a driver right now. I received a phone call yesterday, and I do believe this a gentleman was, he lives in Washington, and he's originally from Somalia, and he called me and he was asking the questions, can I take the class if I am driving on the road? I am still a driver. And the answer is this, guys. Our class is once a week. So if you can manage, not to drive for that four hours, and usually we start 10.30 central time, it depends where you're going to be located. If you can be parked and you're going to have your laptop with you and you're going to have internet, we have lots of drivers who still take our classes and they gain the knowledge. So we were start talking about all of this and we were discussing how he got to me and he simply told me, listen, I was watching other people in trucking and uh, YouTube suggested your video. And he's like, now I am addicted. I love your long videos. You have so much knowledge. And that's why I'm asking you guys, if you're watching us, please put the like, put the smile, put the, ask the questions. We don't want negativity. If you are negative, well, you, you can keep it to yourself. We are here to have positive energy. We are here to educate. We are here to empower each other. But for us to reach out to more people, we need your help. So please always share, always put the like, put the comments, ask me questions, and I usually will reply. So if you are still on the road, it is still possible to take the class. Of course, if you're gonna be driving and I see you driving and watching my class, unfortunately, I will disconnect you. I will take you out of our Zoom meeting because safety is first. Safety on the road is number one priority. So no one's going to be jeopardizing taking my class if you are driving. Second question, which I receive, should I start opening my company? Should I start creating LLC? And everybody loves that fancy LLC, LLC, LLC. Well, maybe all those trucking gurus just know that it's one of the structures, right, guys? So we have business structures for companies in the USA. It can be corporation, S or C right? It can be partnership. It can be LLC. So usually, if you are planning to be a dispatcher, there is no need to open LLC. You can just go with a corporation as. It's cheaper for you. You're not going to pay more taxes. So please, when you hear some information, double check. 
you are like a little investigator. So if you check, and nowadays with Google and with all the artificial intelligence, there is no excuse not to find the answer. And if you have two, three sources explaining, please make sure that you read. The best advice is to call your accountant, whoever does your taxes, because they know your situation. They know your financial situation. They know your marital status. They know a lot of you and they will give you advice because maybe you already own the company. Maybe you can just do it as DBA, doing business as. So do not start opening anything until we start the class. So I can give you my, um, my advice and then we're going to go from there. Another biggest concern is, well, do I have to invest and go and buy all this fancy computer, apples, all the screens? Well, I can tell you this. To take the class, it would... It, it's okay to take it on laptop, but if you are really serious of becoming a dispatcher, you will need to have two screens. You don't have to get the fancy computer as long as you have a desktop with two screens connected because you will need to have lots of app running, starting with just even Google Maps. Later, we're going to cover PC Miler professional software for tracking, for the mapping and everything else. You're going to have load board. You're going to have to have access to factoring. You have to have access to ELD providers, right? So having two screens is going to help you. It's going to be easier for you, for your eyes, for the way you organize your space, right? It has to be quiet settings. You have to have the comfortable room, making sure that you have no extra noises because, again, you're going to be calling a lot. You're going to be responding to the phone calls. So it has to be a very comfortable chair, guys. Chair is important because sometimes you will be sitting for hours in front of the computer. But all of this, this is just the small details, right? Um, what do we have? We have a questions. Every teacher teaches differently. So if you end up being a better hands-on teacher and they understand more in depth after your training, then you must be uh, awesome at what you do. Yes, every teacher is different. A lot of people know a lot of information, but this is a kind of a gift, guys, to be able to share, to be able to keep everybody on top of the topics, right? So when I am in a class, I can spot, well, Mike start wondering, let's say Susan is lost. I can see, I can spot. I've been doing it for a while and um, I, I we have a great feedback. We have a great feedback from the students and usually they do miss our classes and um, they come back to us for the safety, compliance, and uh, other other classes. And I miss all of you guys. I'm telling you, I think, well, sometimes I'm going to take a bigger break. And then after a week or week and a half, I miss you. I want to keep teaching because this is like, for me, this is enjoyment. And this is a mission to actually educate people and help them to achieve their goals, whatever your goals are. If you want to be a dispatcher, if you want to be an independent dispatch service, if you come to open your company in the future, or if you just uh, trying to see if dispatching is for you. Until you learn the foundation, you cannot understand what is dispatching is about. I received a text message today from someone who is watching my YouTube, not my previous student. And they are trying to ask questions over the text message. Well, uh, I, I took somebody's classes, but I never got the carrier. Can you help me out? What questions do I ask when I call? Well, we discuss it in my classes, in my training, but Unfortunately, guys, I cannot teach somebody just by text messages. I don't know what you know. I don't really know the uh, what can you bring to the carrier. So oh, I can tell, okay, call, call the carrier, ask who, check their safety first, see what equipment, ask them for operational cost, make sure that you uh, see which market they run to, what are the challenges, what are they looking for. So there's a lot of questions and we discuss this in classes that it's not a one phone call. It's not, you're not trying to sell your service over the first phone call. That doesn't work like that. First, you have to show what you can bring to the table.
table as a dispatcher. And for that, you need to have a extra knowledge. You have to be confident. It's not about just answering the phone call, right? Oh, calling about posted load from Chicago to Memphis. Can I get details? How much? Can you give me 50 bucks more? Well, that's a desperate phone calls from people who got into this industry when market was high. It was so easy to book those loads. They even back then, they did not really negotiate or they did not combine their loads together the way they should combine, right? And it's not just a smaller carrier, guys. The bigger mega carriers have the same problem with their dispatch departments. And I do believe it's because of the lack of continuing education. Market changes. And that's big mega carriers. They need to educate dispatchers. They need to have that lead person who is on top of what's going on. Person who can go in specific to each person and see, well, let's see what are you suffering with. Or is your dead heads are too high? Are you not checking what's going to happen there next day? Are you just getting rid of your truck today? And then two days later, he's stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere right? So it's a lot of moving parts. So this is something which you guys will need to improve. You will need to polish your skills. You have to be on the top uh, reading uh, new information, actually following the magazines, the YouTube channels, following the FMCSA with the rules and regulations, seeing what's going on, making extra phone call, learning how to use the tools, for example, on that load board, on truck stop, analyzing. It's a lot of analyzing. It's a lot of data if you really want to be a pro. Of course, if you just want to pretend to be a dispatcher, then, well, Unfortunately, you're not going to last in this market. That's why we see so many people live in this industry because simply without knowledge, you cannot dispatch in the low market. Without knowledge, you're killing that carrier. You are putting them out of their business with your own hands. I can tell you this. Two weeks of the bad dispatching, sometimes a month, can put carrier out of business. They already suffer and they are in survival mode. That's why, guys, please do not, do not promise nonsense. Do not uh, think that, oh my God, I'm just going to learn on this one. If it's not going to work out, I'm going to find another one. Well, you are playing with people's dreams their financial freedom. A lot of those guys, they've been working for many, many years. They were finally becoming their owner operators. They opened their MC. So unfortunately, you cannot do that. So please don't even come to trucking if you're not willing to invest in knowledge first. Don't come and play those games. The carriers, the owner operators do not deserve and everybody else does not deserve desperate dispatcher who also uh, kind of control the market and take those loads without even understanding why that load is a charity load. Why that load should just stay on that load board and no one, no one should book that load, right? Because it doesn't make sense. You cannot keep adding money. But as a dispatcher, it's not going to be you who is adding money. It's actually your owner operator. It's your small company. So for you, you can just sit in there and play in the games. But this is the wrong way to run the business. Uh, hi, I will pretty soon sign up for dispatch training class. Now I am on the road, but I watching your video. Yes. Hi, Emmanuel. Sounds good. I would like to take a course where I can learn all the steps to start my own trucking company and how to get the freight for my truck. Is it possible? So we do have the webinar, which actually I believe scheduled in the end of June. This is a three hour webinar live where we go through the steps, how to open trucking company, what to do and not to, uh, to do. It's like only $199. You're going to receive, it's three and a half hours. Usually we go like four hours. We're going to go from the beginning, opening DOT, MC, BOC3, clearing house, uh, IFTA, permits, everything what you need to be prepared for. We're going to go through factoring facts. We're going to go through insurance requirements. We're going to show you what it's going to cost you because believe it or not, before you open trucking company, you need to kind of predict your operational cost. You need to have a business plan because some of you are not ready to come to trucking. 
You have to have some money put aside. And I can tell you this, to start rocking, and I'm not even talking about equipment, buying equipment, but just to open insurance, all the requirements, the time it's going to take to activate that MC, you should have at least from 15 to 20,000 available just for that part. And we're not talking about down payment for equipment. We're not talking about registration for the truck. We're not talking about maybe leasing or renting the trailer, right? So that's why I would love you to have the reality check. Make sure that you understand ups and downs. And then when you're ready, then you can come to trucking. Okay, what else do we have? The questions. Uh uh, hello, I'm from Pakistan. You teach very well. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, any other questions? Well, let's look. Let's see. Let me move this so I can be closer. Oh, that sun. Sun is so nice. I, I, love, I love summers in Chicago. So let's see the market conditions. And let's see how did we finish May. Because we are on June 8th. So let's see. Let's see what was the national uh, data. And remember, we are talking about loaded miles. So for the dry van, we finished the, uh, with the rates 207. $2.07 for dry van national uh, spot uh, rate, right? Let's compare, guys. So you understand how low market is. So comparing to previous May of 2022, the spot load market went down 61%. For drive-in, the load to truck ratio down minus 43%. Minus 43%. So in last May, we were plus 31%. For dry vans, plus 31% for the previous year. So for compared to 2021, the May of 2022, we were up. Everybody was coming to trucking, right? And as of this May, it's minus 43%. Guys, this is this is crucial. That's why people don't understand what's going on. Well, this is the reality, right? The spot rates, and when we talk about the spot, spot rates, something to, to do maybe, uh, you know, you guys have to understand. For example, Chicagoland, right? We have so many people who live in Chicagoland, uh, truck drivers. So usually spot market on Monday is goes down. Why? Because we have more trucks than we have loads. For example, on Friday, on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, it goes up a little bit. And then on Friday, it goes up. Why? Because a lot of drivers, they want to stay home for the weekend. They do their reset. They want to go with their family. So on Friday, the spot market, let's say in Chicago, goes up. But if we look in general, the spot rates for the May of 2023 compared to the May of 2022, we are minus 23%. Again, spot market is affected by holidays, by the day of the week, by some uh, maybe unusual, let's say, tornado. Let's say now we have fires in Canada, so all East Coast is under the uh, fires. So something unusual, spot market is affected, or supply and demand. So this affects maybe two, three days, right? Okay, let's go to flatbeds. So what are flatbeds are doing in May? Well, the national data shows that we finish with $2.65 for loaded miles. And remember, I did not mention that with the drive ends, but if we're talking about loaded miles, you should deduct at least another 15 cents because we do have deadheads. Deadheads are not calculated here. So if we calculate that, that means that step decks, flatbeds finish $2.50 for May of 2023. And let's see that flatbed load to truck ratio compared to 2022 went down even more than dry wind. 81% less. 81% less. So that's why 
I don't know which equipments you guys are running, but probably people with flatbed step deck, they're like, what's going on? Usually this is our market. Usually step decks, flatbed, they start in the end of March and they go to like end of October. Why? Because of the construction, because people building, people fixing their routes. So usually it would be high uh, season for them. And look at those numbers. Those numbers are not, not good looking numbers. So how can somebody without knowledge in logistics, without knowledge in a different markets, without pre-booking, without negotiation skills, claim themselves a dispatcher? Well, guys, please, this is a serious business. We, you affecting a lot of, a lot of um, drivers by not knowing the basics, by not understanding these numbers. Okay. And let's go to the reefers. So let's see. The reefers for May end up with 246 loaded miles minus 15 cents. So we are actually at 230. And again, this was a produce season, guys, right? We just started to have some stuff coming up from Yuma, Nogales, San Diego. We start having what? We start having some mixed produce. In Florida, we just had watermelons. Have you ever seen watermelons not paying? Like, this is very unusual. They were barely paying $220, 230 on the East Coast. If you were going to Midwest, well, two bucks, dollar ninety. And going to Florida was not paying as well. So those went advance. Hopefully, guys, you did not go for the last part of those early watermelons. And hopefully you did not end up with rejection, right? Remember, when you take the watermelons for the two, three day transit, the chances that it's going to be rejected, not those early uh, watermelons, but like second, third, fourth week are so high that you actually killing your carrier with your decision. Stay away from that. Make sure it goes on the reefer. So here you go. As a dispatcher, do you need to know the different types of equipment? Do you need to know what's coming up with every commodity, right? What are the challenges? What, what is good? What is bad? Of course, you need to know this, guys, before you're going to proclaim yourself, I am a dispatcher. You need to understand commodities. You need to understand shippers, receivers. You need to understand hours of service because you need to calculate the transit. You have to predict the transit. We're not talking about miles. Well, it's 2,000 miles. Well, if I am a car, I can do it like nonstop. Well, we're not a car. We, we have rules, right? Hours of service is important. It depends when are you picking up. It depends who is a shipper. It depends when are you delivering. Those all little details, and that's what we practice in, in a class. And I can tell you this, when we had a practice, and I will be posting the videos maybe even tonight and later tomorrow, all this week, I will be posting videos of our students practicing. And it was hard in the beginning to connect details for pickup delivery to hours of service. But we practiced so many times that by the end and when they were doing practice, most of them already had it like, okay, now I understand. But without explanation, it's very hard for a person who have not been a driver before, for a person who does not know the rules to connect those two important things, right? So hours of service is important. So let's see, going back to the reefer, low to truck ratio compared to the last year. We are minus 52%. So 52% low to truck ratio is down compared to the May of 2022. Okay, here is a question. Can you explain how to set up with a broker and do you have to set up with them to book a load from them? Yes, we have it. It's called initial setup. You do need, it's like a partnership, right? If you want to do business, let's say you going to do business with a TQL. Well, before they're going to give you the first load, you have to set up your carrier. You need to have certain paperwork. Please find uh, find uh, my um, videos from probably two years ago. How to create carrier setup packet. How to get set up. Because there is very detailed video. But just to kind of go really fast. Well, 
you need to make sure that you have information from your carrier. What do you need? Well, you need to have a general information. Na, uh, name of the carrier, their MC, DOT, their tax ID, email, the phone number, right? You need to have a proof of authority. You need to make sure that uh, you do have notice of assignment if they do use the factoring. You need to make sure that carrier owner uh, fill out uh, the W-9 for the IRS. You need to have some references. So that's what you put together and we call it carrier setup. So when you as a dispatcher, what are you doing? Well, you are doing this on behalf of your carrier, right? So you represent your carrier. This is not your company. Everything what is going to be signed, it's not going to be signed by you. The owner of the company has to give you permission, right? So that's why when people say, well, dispatchers have to have uh, authorities. They have to have insurance. Well, not. We are in between. We are providing service. For example, as accountant does a service. So as a dispatcher, you provide a service and your duties are what? Make sure that you can set up with the brokers so you can book those loads. You as a dispatcher calling about the details. You're the one who is listening. You're the one who is determined, is this a good load? By the transit, by the rate per mile, by the commodities. But what are you going to do with him next day? So it's a lot of things. As a dispatcher, you are decision maker. Dispatcher is the most important person in trucking. We are the one who can help carriers to survive and we are the one who can put them out of business very fast, okay? So please, one more time, I'm not going to go through the carrier setup because we do have few videos right there and it's very, very detailed and you just do it over and over and over. The moment you got set up, you don't have to do it every load you book because you're already in a system. So how do they find you? Well, they find you by your MC number, by your DOT number. So they're going to verify information and then you start talking about the load, the details for exactly this load. So initial setup usually done just once. You might need to do what? You, you have to maybe you change the factor and well, you need to update your notice of assignment. Once a year, you change your insurance. Well, you need to give them updated certificate of insurance, right? With a new policy, with a new limits, whoever your agent, whoever is a producer, what else? Well, maybe TQL decide instead of 17 pages, they are adding another five pages to their uh, contract. So then they will ask you, you know what? Recently, we just changed our contract. You are already in the system, but we need you to sign this uh, another addendum or maybe Appendix B, A, C, whatever they changing. So then you do it once. But usually we get set up and we already in the system. So paperwork set up, it's so easy. And most of the people, most of the brokers now, they use a third party. Third party companies as RMIS, onboarding, my carrier, my carrier uh, setup, and debt onboarding. So it's all easy because it comes with a link. Most information is already verified about your carrier. You just need to make sure that everything is correct. You need to make sure that you answer a question, click, click, click. Usually, when we do it in a class, it takes us, wow, two minutes. Why? Because I explain everything. But without it, it's 30 seconds process. So some dispatchers say, well, I'm not that good with the computers. I don't know if I can do it. Guys, we're not going to be software engineers as a dispatchers. This is a very friendly uh, computer user uh, level. You, of course, need to know how to click, right? How to choose the answer. You need to know how to add it, read, uh, change something with a PDF, uh, PDF, whatever, whatever you use, whatever editor you use. You need to make sure that you read, right? So you're comprehensive uh, and um, skills are there. You need to learn how to communicate. You need to learn how to listen and hear two different things listening and hearing the details are uh, something that you will be training yourself, right? Uh, what else? So setup is very, very easy. And then when you book the load and you agree on the rate and they ask you who is the driver, what truck is it going to be, the phone number for the driver, his name, his trailer, you will receive the rate confirmation. 
So I suggest for you find another video. Do you need to verify the rate confirmation before you sign? I also had it like, in, I don't know, the last year or previous year. And some of the videos I need to start redoing just because maybe make them shorter and um, and just see just see if we can help more people because some people like just a 10 minutes video. Some people enjoy watching me while they're driving and they do not mind to, to listen to me probably getting tired of me on a background, right? But I mean, you receiving the information, especially from YouTube, you receiving it for free. Uh, hi, Vitaly. How are you? Slava Ukraini. Um, Slava. My heart is breaking with the news of the um, ecological disaster. It's just um, cannot cannot even comprehend. I, I I like I I don't want to believe what happened in Ukraine, and that's why we need to bring awareness. Um, that we have so many people put out of uh, place of their houses, they're losing an ecological ecosystem. It's going to have effect. And um, guys, just pray for Ukraine, pray for people, for animals, for this. This is a disaster. And unfortunately, somehow, I don't really see the big coverage. And again, Europe is just quiet. Uh, America is quiet and everybody else. Well, this is going to have effect on so many people, on so many countries, on ecological situation that this is not a joke anymore. So this is very sad. Emanuel, I like your spirit a lot. You like my spirit? Well, that's nice. Thank you. I'm trying to work on myself, trying to improve, trying to be better, be kinder, trying to listen to my inner me, trying to connect to the nature, to other people. So I've been doing a lot of, a lot of inner searching, my soul searching. Do you see, you probably see my eyes are also changing the colors because finally I do believe that we as a human, we can, we can help and heal people with love, with care, with empowering each other. And we should get rid of all the negativity in any business, in any industry, in any level. So that's why make sure that you guys are protected. Make sure that you are safe on the road and ask for help. Ask for help. Sometimes when you pass by and you see some sad eyes or sad face, just ask. Is there anything I can do to help you? Sometimes even just giving the stranger the hug can change their life forever. So don't be afraid to open up to others. And people think, oh my God, Alex, you're so strong. You seem like, well, guys, we all go through drama. We all go through hard times. So we do put those masks, right? Because when you're a successful person, when you empower somebody, sometimes people don't know that, yes, I'm just another human who goes through a lot of, a lot of different issues as well. But in the end of the day, only you can control your emotions. Only you know what's good for you. Only you can feel if uh, you can improve. People can give you knowledge. People can give you tools. People can show you the path. But only you can take that path. Only you can walk those steps. Unfortunately, I wish it would be that miracle, miracle service, right? You come and you say, well, I want this, this, and this, and this. Can it all be arranged, right? Well, it's not. Life is not an easy adventure, but me getting older and getting wiser, right? I can tell you this. Go back to your inner you. Find what makes you happy. Get rid of the guilt. Make sure that you, a person who empower you first, because if you empower yourself, then you can empower others. If you don't love yourself, you cannot love anybody else. So let's go back to those roots. And this goes again for loving what you do. If you want to become a dispatcher, you have to love being a dispatcher. If you want to open businesses, you have to love to be in charge of the people. You have to be love in risking. It's a lot of risk in any business. It's not just in trucking. 
And, you know, as many of you know who took my classes, I've been in real estate. I lost a lot of money when market went down in real estate. But coming back, continuing, finding a new journey, that's what is important. And hopefully, hopefully, you know, with my help, with my knowledge, I change people's life and I and I help them some kind of um, way. You know, we do, I do receive a lot of personal messages like, well, thank you, Alex, you helped me, but I want to thank you guys because without my students, without my followers, without people around me, I would not be able to progress. I would not be able to grow on all the levels, right? Emotionally, spiritually, financially. So it's like a circle of life, right? We are all in the same circle and it goes around and around and around. And what you give, that's what you will receive. So, Emmanuel, well, we have to see you back with the safety. Hopefully, the market is going to step up a little bit. Make sure July safety is coming up. We need to make sure that your safety and compliance is under the control. Well, what else is going on? Um... Unfortunately, I wanted to make a few phone calls. I wanted to make a few phone calls. And, you know, my uh, landline, my phone.com, they're having an issues because I just wanted to see post uh, like refers and see what's going on. But let me let me just have a little quick pick. For example, for the refer in Los Angeles for today, we had 620 loads and... And let's see the highest pain rates, right? So the highest pain rates right now, as of now, and I wish that my phone would work now so we can actually call and ask the details. But it's posted, for example, for not for the team going to South Carolina. Oh, wow, two picks, two drops. Guys, we don't do two picks, two drops. No, we're not sitting in California for two, three days. That's not gonna work. Let's look at this one. One pick, two drops, still two drops on the East Coast, kind of going to Connecticut, uh, 270, so 8,000. But again, we do not know the details. Uh, Spartan Freight, something new, 1343455, not sure even if they approved or not. I'm not going to go to factoring right now. What else? For the team... Oxnard, California, going to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, 7, uh, 70, 80, 100, 280 per mile. Well, with the negotiations, probably you can get to 85, 86. Well, not bad. Let me see, is Northern California, Spain? Guys, remember, we have states which are huge states. When we talk about Texas, when we talk about Florida, we always divide Florida on Miami market, Tampa market, and let's, let's say Jacksonville market, right? Totally different animal, totally different rates, totally different things going on. Same with California. So now I was checking on what? On South, South California, right? So let me see if Northern California is paying. So I'm going to just add it. And that's what you do. Remember, if Northern California paying better, you don't want to go all the way to Los Angeles. So you have to deadhead. So let's see which California is paying San uh, Francisco. Let's put San Francisco. And again, I'm doing for today just to see the reality. So in uh, Los Angeles, it was 630 loads as of right now. Look at this. San Francisco for reefer is 384. So less, 50% less. So here is the answer for new dispatcher. Which California do you want to send your truck to? Tracy, San Francisco, or do you want to be in Los Angeles, San Diego? Of course, there is no brainer, guys. Of course, you want to be right now in Los Angeles area. And let's see the rate. So approximately the same miles. So see, you have to deadhead. You have to go to Salinas. You probably, so, but let's just pick one so we can compare. So we were talking about what? Massachusetts, so 86. But again, two big drops Wednesday night, text me. Well, all of this new brokerages, which I am very concerned. It's a lot of double brokering going on in California. Lots of scammers. Pay attention, guys. 
you need to make sure that you double check, you verify, you call the company and double check because sometimes they are using the big names. They pretending to be C. Robinson. They pretending to be Alan Lund. They pretending to be Trinity. They pretending to be Pepsi. We receive so many emails nowadays. Please pay attention to the scammers. Maybe, maybe tomorrow that's what we're going to do. Paying attention to scammers who pretend to be a big company and how can you see the red signs, right? So maybe tomorrow afternoon, after I'm going to go to, I have a big meeting with a mega carrier. They have uh, 220 trucks, hazmat carrier here, a local, and I'm going to go and help them out to see how we can do uh, continuing education for their dispatcher. So maybe, maybe tomorrow, 5, 6 p.m., I'll go live and we're going to really see the red signs of the scammers in the last few weeks. So, okay, San Francisco, we check. Uh, let's see what's going on in Yuma, Arizona, right? So let's go down. So we are checking the produce market. So Yuma, Arizona. Okay, let's see. Compared to California, well, Yuma, Arizona, as of today, is only 194 loads. Right now it's 5.38 p.m., so it is, what, two hours behind. So you can still book loads. Oh, God, I wish the phone.com would fix their problem. Um, and I am on my phone doing live, so I cannot even put my cell phone right now for the phone call. So let's see what's going on here. What is the highest uh, rate per mile? Um, let's see. All right. Okay. So if you're in Yuma, Arizona, we're talking about a little bit less miles because we're already closer, right? In Arizona, let's check, for example, going to Philadelphia, Megacorp is paying uh, 7000 without negotiation. One-on-one. -on -one. I like to work with a Megacorp, actually. I don't, I, I, I do like, um, they, they are loyal. If you've been a good carrier, they will give you better price. So we're talking about 270 per mile. This is without negotiation. So if you compare going all the way to California, going to California doesn't pay. If you are a reefer, I wouldn't go all the way to California. I would go right now to Yuma, Onogales, right? Uh, because first, Nobody pays to go to California, so you are going to end up having a better rate per mile. Okay, Alex, you have a beautiful body and sexy voice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, we should get drinks together and have lots of fun. Well, okay, let's go back to trucking, okay? We're not on a dating, dating side. We're not on the let's get social. We are here to learn, right? So... Uh, hi, we cannot work with many brokers. How will the inspection affect the book loads? And when we want to set up with RMIS, it writes an arrow. Well, you should probably call them because some information is actually probably missing. So you need to verify the information. So just trying to set up with them, you need to actually call them. They have a great customer service and they will tell you what you are missing. Or maybe they spotted something, which I don't know, hopefully you never play the games of double brokering. Inspection will help you because nowadays they want you to have at least one inspection with a win number so they can verify that actually this is a truck which going to be picking up the load and delivering. They want to make sure that you actually are a real carrier. Epic 5TV. Alex, how old are you? Wow, guys, I just turned 46. I am gorgeous, unique, sexy, attractive, energetic 46-year-old. And I am not hiding my age i am enjoying my life so there you go so 46 turned few weeks ago if you saw the video of me jumping from the plane that was my birthday may 11th so 46 year old okay what else so let's go to yuma and let's check let's just check on added and let's do nogales is nogales pain better so let me just move this here. Oh, let me move my 
Oh, let me move my stuff here. Okay, no galas. No galas, Arizona for today. So if in Yuma, as of today, was 194 loads for reefers at 270 per mile if you go into its cost. Well, no galas has... 485 again guys arizona yuma is closer to california nogales is down right bottom of arizona the border pay attention pulping the temperature asking if the produce already had the usda inspection it's already packaged or not right oh thank you i look 26 baby yeah i feel 31. So I'm always going to be 31. I don't know why. That's just the number, which I was really happy. 31. I was the happiest person and I'm happy uh, every, every, every year. I'm, I'm just a happy person. Um, Nogal is 485. So 485. Again, let's see the highest paying load. Let's look at the rate. Let's also compare what? Compare the East Coast. Well, going to Massachusetts, they are paying 8000 So look, guys, we just compared today. Los Angeles market, Yuma, Arizona, and then we are in Nogales. From Nogales, it's the last miles, and they are paying $3.30 per mile, rate right per mile, three forty. dollars And this is without negotiation. Guys, I wish I would just have another phone so I can, I can see how much we can push them, right? Because they still have 486 loads. And probably because I posted, um, you know, um, I posted my carrier. Probably his phone is going crazy right now. I need to make sure that he knows that I'm just looking at the information. Look at this. Nogales to Akamanovak, Wisconsin. Probably around this. In Akamanovak, Wisconsin, it's a big DC. Look at this. 5,500, three bucks per mile. Landstar Ranger, oh my dear Landstar Ranger, do not work with you. Well, lots of double brokering, lots of people who are not telling you the real information. Alicia, lots of them are actually outsourced and they used to be in Odessa. And you know, I'm Ukrainian and I don't mind outsourcing, but I wasn't proud of our Landstar office in Odessa. They did not really do a good job all the time lying about appointments, not answering the phones, taking advantage. So one day, like two years ago, I said no more. I would never work specially. And Landstar has a different different um, agents. But the one I am talking about, this is a Landstar region uh, ranger in Rockford, Illinois. So never ever work with them. So um, that's my personal stuff. Okay, so let's see Nogales. Now, before we finish, and guys, again, sorry that taking too long. I just wanted to talk for a few minutes. I guess we are almost to an hour, right? Let's see what's going on in Laredo and McAllen. So let's check taxes. And then, of course, we're going to check our debt Florida. So we're kind of going down and seeing the produce market. So let's see. McAllen... Mark Allen taxes. Okay, so let's compare for today. 286 loads. 286, the highest one paying. Again, going to Massachusetts, it's 260, and we have less miles because Mark Allen, we're talking about 2100, 2200 miles to Massachusetts. If you come to Massachusetts from Nogales, we're talking about 24, 2500. If it's a Yuma, we're talking about 26, 27. And then if we are going all the way from California with million pick, million drops, then uh, we're talking about 29 to 3200 miles. So again, 6,000 or 8,000. When you talking about different pickup and miles is a different rate per mile. And the higher your rate per mile, that's where your profit is, right? So you need to know your operational cost. What does it cost this carrier to break at zero? So for example, if it cost him $2 to break at zero after insurance, after equipment payment, after 
after everything what is involved maintenance preventive maintenance breakdowns all this load boards all the four so if he's at two dollars so pay attention to me new dispatchers if you dispatching him less than two dollars what are you doing you putting him out of business for every mile let's say you're doing dollar 90 right now but his operational cost is two two or five because people bought those newer trucks people pay drivers i don't know how they can afford but they still pay drivers 70 cents 75 cents per mile so their operational cost is like two or five two ten and if the dispatcher is averaging for the whole miles dollar 90 you have to add 15 cents per each mile so let's take a legal run a week we're talking about $3,200, $3,300, so, I mean, 100 miles. Let's talk about months. We're talking about, let's say, 12,000 to 13,000 miles per month. Multiply that by 15 cents. That's how much money you need to add to pretend that you're running trucking. This is a charity. This is not trucking. This is a charity. That's why owners of the company have to understand their operational cost. So maybe you do the shorter miles, or maybe you have to have a driver who is not, you're not gonna pay 70 cents, or maybe you have to go on the road, or maybe you at the point where maybe bankruptcy is the best chance for you right now. Don't go in a deeper hole, guys. You have to sit down and make decisions. For some of you who came to trucking without understanding that it's not an easy business and went and spent half a million dollars, bought four trucks without extra knowledge, even if you came and took the classes in dispatch and safety, but you were not preparing for the toughness of this, for the market. If you don't know how to keep your drivers, well, unfortunately, this was a wrong decision. But even then, you have to know when to say goodbye to this experience because the longer you sit, the more money you're going to lose. So guys, let's be a big boys. Let's look at the mirror and say, well, I wasn't prepared. This is a very expensive lesson, but I am going to get out right now. I am going to maybe come back in a few years, maybe never. I am going to kind of save whatever I can save, maybe sell those trucks. And of course, you're not going to sell them for the same money, but this is decisions which you as a business person, as a uh, interpreter, you sometimes have to understand. Sometimes you need to get out of something which is not making profit. You cannot start spending all your savings, start borrowing the money from people or put yourself in so financial uh, hole that it's going to be no comeback. So please, guys, some of you, if you need a personal consultation, I do have lots of knowledge in finance, business, and everything else. Maybe it's time to reach out, schedule that consultation, and see the reality. The longer you wait, the harsher it's going to be to come back, okay? So be smart about it, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, a question. All the courses are online via Zoom. Yes, they're online. Uh, they are live. You have to be able to have the camera. You have to have a good connection. Your microphone has to be working because I am not teaching walls. I am not teaching uh, ghosts, right? You have to be present. You have to take part in a class. I will be calling your name. I need to make sure that you guys gather the information, that you actually comprehend. You can ask the question. And that's why I can tell you this. I don't think that anybody on the USA market is putting as much energy in the classes as I do. And I am proud of this. You know, not because I want to say I am the best, but I give a lot. And I want you to give me back as an instructor even more. Finishing the quizzes, participating in the class. Don't take some things per personally because it's a really, really fast pace. So we have to cover a lot. Making sure that you respect others, learning from each other, asking the questions, completing the homework. If you do all the steps, I can tell you this, you will be my shining star. Okay, Ukrainian women are gorgeous. We have a lot of gorgeous women in different nationalities, but actually the statistics, it's a fact that we have the scale, the most gorgeous uh, women in the on the planet. And Ukrainians are number one. So we have that beautiful, beautiful genes, right? So yeah, we are number one. Uh, 
I will never be tired of listening to you all. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. I need to attend your class. When is your next start going to start? We're starting next Saturday. The registration is going to be closed on Wednesday because most of the students are already preparing. So do not wait till the last minute. And again, you guys can find us where? LearnDispatchToday.com, right? Make sure you see me with my red hair. Make sure that it's not other people because now we also have a scammers. I had few people who bought the classes and it's not my classes. So make sure this is a blue, blue, blue and white website. It's me there on a picture. Make sure that if you go to, it's connect to my Facebook, to my Instagram, to my TikTok. If it takes you there, that it means that is my classes. Okay. Well, what other questions? So. We went and we checked McAllen, right? So McAllen was lower, 286. Let's compare it to Loretto because we have like, what, 157 miles difference. Sometimes it's better to end up in Loretto. Sometimes it's uh, good to be in McAllen. But again, 150 miles, if they are willing to pay you for deadhead, uh, you can still deadhead. But remember, they have to reimburse you for that. Otherwise, you can still find a load in Mark Allen. You don't have to go to Loretta. So let's see. I know that Mr. Lincoln is always does the short holes there. And sometimes, sometimes he takes the loads to East Coast and probably he learned his lesson that with East Coast, you have to pre-book and your negotiations to go to East Coast from uh, Texas, from Loretta have to be stronger because East Coast is ruthless that's tall there is no load so you need to put together two loads and see your average rate per mile so look at this kind of the same but most of the loads are picking up in McAllen so if I switch my dad had 200 miles so we don't see McAllen then we only have 100 loads so McAllen is stronger than Loretto and let's look at the prices, the highest paying prices. Well, we have 250, 240, 260 going to East Coast. So from all of the cities which we were talking today, uh, actually Nogales is paying the most. And it is for today, guys. We have to remember, you cannot watch this video two months later and like, oh, I'm going to Nogales. Alex told me Nogales is paying market changes sometimes market changes to afternoon right sometimes it's going to be spot for example on saturdays usually they pay more because it's no trucks and that's what my student mr lincoln that's what he likes to do because he lives there so for him like maybe he should take a break on monday tuesday but he can pick up a really hot load on saturday right on sunday in depends in uh, instead of friday because he is home right there so situation your driver always going to be different right so we cannot people ask me alex how much should i charge well it's in the pants uh where is your driver's lives when is his restart what is his hours of service what he likes to do does he do assist is he a calm guy who can do uh you know wait for the produce because you have to wait for the produce right okay uh so that's about it so let's check our Florida, right? Should we do that? Let's check for today and let's put like Tampa. I'm, okay, let's start with Miami. So let's see reality in Miami. And again, we guys talking about reefers only. Maybe tomorrow I'll do another live and we're gonna cover the drive-ins and then we can cover flat beds and step decks, right? It was not pre-planned live. And unfortunately, from my phone, I cannot share the screen. That's why I like to schedule them and uh, do it via StreamYard so I can share the screen so you guys can see. So it's easier for me to read the question. So Miami, wow, my perfect Miami has only 39 loads and the highest rate per mile for reefer coming from Miami. Oh my God, let's see. Going to Kenosha is a dollar per mile. Wow, dollar per mile. This is Miami, right? So do you want to take that load even it seems like it's pay all the way to Miami? No, unless you live there, unless your driver lives there. But I can tell you this. 
If you are somewhere in Midwest, sometimes it's better for your driver to fly to Miami. It's going to cost you less than drive all the way to Miami and then get out empty or for dollar a mile. You know, you're going to add a lots and lots of money. Okay, let's add it. And let's put, instead of Miami, let's put middle of the Florida. So remember, we are splitting We are splitting the Florida. So we have Miami market. Let's put Tampa, Tampa, Florida for today. And again, it's already dead. Why? Remember, California, I am in Chicago. It's still two hours behind. Washington, Oregon, it's still uh, two hours behind. Uh, Arizona, right? It depends which part you are still hours. So you can still cover your truck. Florida is one hour ahead. It's almost 6 p.m. in Chicago. So it's already 7 p.m. So that's why we don't even see the loads. So let's do the trick. Let's post it for tomorrow and see. Because guys, if you don't have load by now in Florida, there is no magical... Dispatching can happen unless, unless somebody's going to cancel and you receive phone call, but it's, there are so many trucks that I don't think so. So for tomorrow, we only have 72 loads in Tampa area. And let's see what is the rate per mile. Are you kidding me? They want you to go, my dear TQL. You want us to go all the way to Los Angeles from Arcadia, Florida for dollar $2,600. Guys, I don't know what the hell they are smoking there, but nobody can afford to go 2,500 miles for dollar per mile. This is, this is nonsense. You'd better just not drive. You'd better take vacation now, right? Okay, going to Ohio, dollar 40 to Washington uh, Courthouse, probably Kroger, probably Kroger there. Okay, what else? And that's it. Going to East Coast, I don't really see the rate, no rates, but it's only 72 loads for tomorrow. Let's go a little bit up. Let's move to Jacksonville, right? So let's go to Jacksonville and we're going to do it for tomorrow again because it's already on East Coast. It's already 7 p.m. So for tomorrow in Jacksonville, for reefer, it's 119 loads. Let's see the best paying load. Wow, all the way to Seattle, one pick, one drop. They're paying $1.90. Prosperity Freight by their MC number. You know what? I'm going to check this out. If they are even approved, because it's like, really? Nobody's paying $5,700. So let me see. Their MC number is, so let's check their credit. Their MC number is. Uh, one, five, one, two, eight, zero, zero. Let's, I hope that, they, of course, they are not approved. So here is a red flag again. It sounds too good. Florida is not paying specially for such a long load. Cross country, $2. They are not approved. They are from Georgia. So they recently opened the MC. When did they open? They got active. Wow, February 10th of this year. Maybe they're good, maybe they're not. But as a dispatcher, remember your duties. You have to check credit of the broker before booking the load. And in this case, if you have RTS, well, RTS telling you, hello, dispatcher, do your job. Do not book the load, which sounds so good. Oh my God, I got the load for $1.90. I'm such a good dispatcher. And then what? Your carrier is not going to get paid or he has to chase this prosperity freight uh, LLC, right? So make sure that you know what you're doing. So that was Jacksonville. Well, let's go a little bit south, uh, south Georgia and South Carolina because that's where we have... Uh, produce uh, moving, right? With the cabbage, with the corn. What's coming up? Coming up? Soon we're going to have the Independence Day. So what do we usually ship on Independence Day? The sweet corn. So the market will come back to Florida for maybe 10 days, maybe two weeks. So make sure you pay attention when you send your truck there. Then it's going to move to Georgia, bottom Georgia, and it's going to move to uh, south part of South 
<coughs> Carolina, excuse me, guys. Make sure you always stay hydrated. Dispatchers, a lot of times, forget to eat, forget to drink, forget to take care of themselves. So don't do that. You need to take care of yourself. Okay. So let's add it and let's put like Savannah, Georgia. So let's see. Savannah, Georgia. And it's still too early for peach season. So they're going to be a little bit later in the July. July. Uh, and okay. So Savannah 90. No, there is no produce yet in Savannah. You know what we forgot? We forgot to check Washington and Oregon. So let's do that for the last thing. Let's put Yakima, uh, Washington and see that those cherries already shipping those yellow cherries, red cherries. And let's see. Mm, not really. We only have 39. And going to Brooklyn, New York, they're paying $1.90. Armstrong Transport, what are you guys thinking? Who is in their mind gonna go from Venachi to Yorkers, New York, which is a big no-no, for your rate? Are you kidding me? For $1.90? No. Oh, here it is. And another, uh, another broker, Creative Truck Lines, let me check them. Posting the same one for $7,500. let us see if they approved. So let's see why the same load has such a big difference, right? So let's see. MC is 154-154-3165. Let's see who are these brokers. Same story. Creative Truck Lines Inc. from Springfield, Missouri. They just got open on May 12th. Really? And they are promising you 7,500. Guys, this is a big sign of double brokering. Please, as a dispatcher, do not jump into something which sounds too good. Cannot be true. Have logic. We are in logistics. Logic. 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 Knowledge. Logic. Make a right decision. Do not play casino by jumping into 7,500, especially when you have three other brokers who paying for the same line, 55, 54. It's too good to be true. And they just opened their MC. Not even a month ago. And they're promising that probably they have a trucking company. Probably they book. I can tell you what's happening. They go. They book from Armstrong. For 5,500, they switch rate confirmation. They post for 7,500. You jumping into this, you go, you pick it up, and then they will disappear. They usually will ask you to check in as other company. They will demand that you send them BOL right away. They will make sure that you send them the pictures. This is a red sign of double brokering. And then you submit this to your factory, and they say, well, this is not a load. This they do not pay, then they're going to say, wow, this was belonging to Armstrong. And then you call Armstrong and like, who are you? Are you also involved in double brokerage? So this is a big no, no, no. And who is in charge of this? Dispatcher. It's not owner com uh, owner's job as a company owner. It's not driver's job. It's you as a dispatcher. You need to put all that together. Did you ever run into scammer and book a load with them by mistake? Well, dear Rustam, I do have enough knowledge. And unfortunately, thanks God, I never book by mistake. But I do have carriers who I do do safety and compliance. And yes, I witnessed uh, in the last few months five or six situation when they were scammed. And that's when we had to go analyze and look. One was from C.H. Robinson, one was from, from another company, but another one was actually pretending to be Armstrong as well. So happens a lot. Again, uh, you have to double check. Even if it's posted, my advice to you call Armstrong and say, well, unfortunately, I don't remember who is my uh, broker, but I have this load number. And a lot of times, they're like, we don't even have this load in the system. This does not belong. Or they're going to say, well, 
which company you at, right? And you're going to tell, well, for example, I'm Rustam Transportation, right? And they're like, well, no, we gave this load to Alex Transportation. And then they're going to hopefully you did not pick up yet. Or if you pick up, then they will make sure, well, you know what? You're not getting paid $7,500. you are getting paid $5,500. Wow, guys, it's been already more. My God, 74 minutes, Alex, went blah, blah, blah. But hopefully you guys learning. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. Do you have a suggested price per mile? I imagine it depends on distance. Again, it comes from a person who does not have foundation. Do I have suggested price? Well, I know how much it should be, but suggested price, it comes from your operational cost. It comes from the market. Well, I wish I could have suggested price, and I would say that all drive-ins should be at least at 260, 275. All reefers should be at 3350, and all flatbed step decks should be at four bucks per mile to be profitable as a business. So actually my suggested price and what's going on with the market and everybody's operational cost, it's totally three different things. That's why, guys, you need to have knowledge so you understand that suggested price and what's going on with market and what exactly you're carrying doing. Suggested price for what? Short loads, regional runs, cross-country, reefer, team, drive-in, flatback, step deck, Driver assist, multi-pick, it's so many things that, I mean, I don't know, maybe some other trucking guru can answer that, but no, I cannot. You have to put all of these things together to understand where we want to be. That's one thing. What is market doing is a different, and you need to validate that, and you need to understand what's going on. Alex, how do you know what type of product you get from state to state? Emmanuel. Have you been in my class? Hmm? Yes or no? Yes? I think so, right, Emmanuel? If I'm not mistaken, you've been in my class. So remember the first homework before even class starts, you do need to finish and you have all the information from all the states, shippers, receiver, commodity, what grows, seasonal changes, the traffic, even population. People ask, Alex, why do you want me to know the density of population? Well, let's talk about Wyoming. How many people live in Wyoming? How many people live in North Dakota? How many people live in Montana? Well, not that many. So that means we don't have that many people. Oh, oh I guess you did not. Oh, you have not been because you... I thought that you were my previous student because I did just had a manual in... Um, in March class, and his last name also starts with T. So I guess I was mistaken. So sorry, I thought I thought it was um, one of my favorite students, Emmanuel. So it, it's hard for me when I just see the first name and the last name. So in my class, we do cover that, and students have to actually, you can do it by Google and take the state and say like, well, what is the production here? What do they grow here, right? So you know, for example, in Arkansas, Mississippi, Georgia, this is a poultry, right? All the chicken. So that means for the reefers, you're going to have fresh meat, frozen meat, right? Fresh chicken, right? You have a killing farms. Also, what's going to happen for the driving? Well, Arkansas, you have a lot of sugar, heavy sugar, cheap loads, right? So you have sugar, you have rice, also heavy loads, not paid. Then you go down and you have in Louisiana, you have the cotton, you know, those loose cottons, which you should not book but then you have seafood. So if you take state by state and just simply spend maybe half hour and you will have a lot of data, you can go to the labor department data, you can go to production, export, import, and that's what you do. So you need to go state by state and it's going to help you tremendously knowing. Plus, you have to remember to put it in perspective of the seasons, right? So remember, like I was just talking right now about we started with the watermelons and we moved to middle Florida, then we go up. What's going to be next one? It's going to be peaches. It's going to be cabbage. Then we're going to have sweet corn, right? Then, then we don't have much in Florida going on, right? Then we go back to our Mother's Day when we have a lot of shipments. Why? From uh, Miami port for what? For the Valentine's Day, the flowers. Then we have actually nursery loads, which starts in April, May. So every state has a data. 
and everything is available. It is a kind of investing your time in a knowledge, but it will pay it off. That's why for me, it's so easy even just looking at like, okay, what's going on? What are we shipping now? For example, here, 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 what is the volume? It took time, but I make my students, it's like mandatory homework to finish. So they get all that information before class and then they have five weeks to actually go. And some of them thinks, oh, it's not that important. And then you can see on a practice when we talking about, okay, you're going to take him to Memphis and he's a dry man. Tell me the commodities you can pick up, right? Or you're going to Birmingham, Alabama. What is there? Well, it's a lot of auto parts, right? It's a lot of... Um, parts for the air uh, air production, right? Then we, we go, okay, what is there for the reefer, right? Well, we still have a lot of canned foods. We have dry goods for the dry. Then we have the chicken. And you need to understand the volume. Here's the thing. If you put in a Google, does uh, Mississippi has apples? I can tell you this. Every state is going to have at least one apple tree. At least one chicken, at least one cow, at least one farm which has a local milk, right, or pumpkin. But that doesn't mean that they have volume for exporting to other states or to have movements with a big uh, trucks, right? So not only you have to look at what is there, but the volume. Is that enough? For example, when we talk about potatoes, well, where's the potatoes come? Well, the biggest one is Idaho, right? We have two seasons there. Then we have some in New Mexico, seasonal one. We have some potatoes in upstate Minnesota. We have potatoes in upstate uh, Portland, but it's only in August. And do the potatoes from uh, Maine go all over? No, they only stayed local on the East Coast, right? That's a difference too. Where are they going to go? Right? So, I mean, if you really want to be a pro dispatcher, this is something that you really, really need to learn. Maybe, maybe we should do the webinar, you know, webinar on markets, production, and everything. So people who know how to dispatch, but they cannot take the full class, but they really want to touch up. Maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. Maybe we will do that. Okay. Uh, it's all good. I'll be soon one of the students. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yes, thanks for the compliments. And again, love you guys. Make sure sign up. Safety and compliance in July. IFTA is in July. Our express class is going to be in August. By express class, it's for people who don't want to do it for six weeks. It's going to be intense. So it's going to be Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and another Saturday and practice day. So it's going to only take us three weeks instead of six weeks. So for people who are not able to uh, have Saturdays off, that would be a good option. So make sure you pre-register. Make sure you pre-register because in express class, I am going to have limited seating because express class, it's faster paced. So it's more information. So I cannot have, you know, guys, our classes are usually big classes and I have a lot of people uh, compared to the last year I had to put like a cap. Last year I was working so much and we were sold out and people were, so my classes were like 75 students, 75 students. And it's just like, I was kind of getting exhausted, not because it's just a lot of people. And it's like, when it's a live classes, it's a lot. But now we put the cap, so we have a cap for like 40 people, 40 people in a class. But for express class, we're probably looking only 20. Only 20 people who have a good learning habits. So if you've been studying, if you can organize, if you can take so much information within two days in a row, then have a week to reconfirm in another week. So some people like that way. They like to put all the energy for some people it takes longer. So again, express class is not for everybody. It all depends on how you comprehend the information, okay? Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the questions. Thanks for all the likes. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, guys. It's only $3.99 and we do give lots of free classes. So it's not like I am making money personally on that subscription, but we, if you've been watching us a lot, 
We give classes for single moms. We give classes for people who go into a struggle. We we helping a lot and we are awarding the free classes. So probably next week on Tuesday, we also gonna be giving the free class for our members. So here, if you believe in universe, if you believe that as well, you still have time to subscribe for, you know, $4 a month. And first, you can be part of changing trucking for the better. Secondary, if you're a lucky person, you might win the class. <laughs> JFD, I guess you are not here to learn. You are here. You are here to make all those comments. Do you have sisters, Alex? Yes, I do have sisters. All my students, females who finish my class are all my sisters. But no, I do not have a sister. I only have older brother. And he's a surgeon back in Ukraine. And he's been helping a lots and lots of people there. So he's not leaving. Thank you, guys. Love you. One more time learndispatchtoday.com. Keep watching, keep commenting, keep liking. And of course, from my previous students for the last class, still waiting on your reviews. Love you guys. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chocolate. This is a great channel. Thank you guys. I'll see you soon. And we're going to talk about scammers. On Monday, we're going to continue with the drive-ins because today we kind of went through all the produce market, right? So let's talk about dry ones on Monday. But tomorrow, red flags for the scammers. I will schedule today probably for 6 p.m. Central Time. So I'll see you tomorrow. And it will be through StreamYard. So I will be sharing the screen because I don't like just talk and look at the screen and you guys don't see what I am looking at. Love you. Be good. Be positive. Stay safe on the road. And um, do I have to get a load board so I can practice? In my class, I do. We have partnership with a dad. So you, do, you will have access practicing load board. Plus, if you have a company, you can sign up for three months with our promo code as well. Because you do need to be comfortable with load board. Okay? Well, I love you guys. People from TikTok is upset because I did not do live there. Okay. Well, guys, it's so many platforms. It's just like, I wish we can just all, all combine. Okay. Well, love you guys. Thanks, hugs and kisses. Love you all. Bye, guys.